What's up, everybody? This is Joey C. What's up, everybody? This is Joey C. with the Brutally Sober Podcast, coming at you with my buddy Bobby C. on the West Coast. What's up, Bobby C.? It's been a couple hey, weeks. Hey, Joey C. Joey C., hello, hello. It's been a couple of weeks since we've seen you here over at the uh, Alcoholics Anonymous Deprogramming Podcast. Uh, but hopefully you've been being entertained by Bobby C. over here on his Anonymous Addiction YouTube channel, which I am a recurring guest on. So don't forget to check that out. Um, today, I don't remember what the last thing we talked about on this podcast was i don't know if we promised our listeners that we were going to do a, a certain subject or not but at this point i've already forgotten about it so i've decided to talk about something different and um before i tell you guys what it is i want you to know that this is something that took me 20 years of research and development to figure out and i finally come to a conclusion where my data is no longer a theory it's fact okay so i brought this little pointer to help me hey <laughs> yeah show you yes. what's going on so if you can't read this i'll tell you what it says this is confidence okay uh, this arrow indicates your increase in confidence all right this is your alcohol consumption this arrow indicates decrease in alcohol consumption confidence goes up when your alcohol consumption goes down now many people are out there they're still researching this okay and they think that Your confidence goes up <laughs> when your alcohol consumption goes up. That's false. That's beautiful charts. Beautiful charting. You see where this pointer is? It's on the false. That's, That's right. False. A lot of people are still doing research on this subject. Now, it took me, I'm 40 years old. It took me half my life to come to the, the data that we see here. Confidence up alcohol consumption down my alcohol consumption is zero percent so you can imagine where my confidence level is at a hundred percent especially when i need it i've been going through some uh employment changes in this past week or so and um there was a couple of stressful times because I maybe didn't know what I was going to do. I, I'll tell you what happened. I, I, I quit one job. I quit one job, committed to another job. That job fell through. Then I went and got another job all in, in one week. So there could have been a lot of nerves and anxiety. Um, for that kind of situation for me. And uh, there was uh, a little bit, but nothing that consumed me enough to uh, think about a drink or, or take a drink. So I just wanted to share with, with Bobby and everyone else that what I've realized is as long as I don't drink, I have the freedom to make decisions that aren't that don't seem as risky to me as when I was drinking. For instance, I could, I, I decided to leave a job and go find another job. And I knew that when I was saying I was gonna be interviewed, when I go into an interview, I'm, I'm really not nervous because I don't have alcohol on my breath. I'm not shaky, I'm not shaky from the night before. Um, I'm confident um, when I'm talking to people in general, there's no ulterior motives. Say somebody asks me, uh, invites me somewhere and it's going to interfere with my drinking schedule. And I would have to 
drive to the destination. Now I have to lie to them and tell them why I can't go because I want to stay home and drink. There's none of that. So there's no hiding anything. There's no lying. It's just all honest conversations. So that's really um, empowering and it's really freeing. And I've been able to get to a place where I can have uncomfortable conversations with people and not, you know, have that with like big physical reactions in my body because I'm nervous. All the alcohol is out of my system. Um, all the times that I've made complete asses out of myself was while I was drinking. I, I, if I make an ass out of myself while I'm not drinking, then maybe that'll happen. I'm sure it's happened plenty of times in the past two years, but um, those are all learning experiences. So, for example, I, I told um, my boss that I was leaving and he didn't take it well. Um, and it wasn't the best interaction. He didn't respond the way I wanted him to respond. And then when he didn't respond the way I wanted him to respond, my plan went off track. So I responded a little bit differently, but I did the best I could. I was honest. And when I left the conversation, that's when it, I could either turn it into, oh shit, that didn't go how I wanted. I really, you know, want to go to the liquor store right now, then it'll help me feel better about the whole situation. Or I can stick with the memory that I have of the uncomfortableness of it and, and learn from it and take points from it where maybe I said the wrong thing or my, my, um, my body movements were maybe Whatever I did was wrong, was wrong, or maybe I, that I could perceive that maybe he took the wrong way. Um, I, I, I could take that as a learning experience. Because sometimes I can sound like a fucking asshole and not even realize it. So this one situation with this guy, I think I sounded like a complete asshole, maybe because I was overconfident and it took him... Um, kind of took him aback because he wasn't expecting it. So maybe I was too, too confident. Um, so these are all learning experiences. Any, anytime where you come away from a, an uncomfortable conversation or situation or whatever, and you're like, oh shit, I should have done it differently. Don't worry about it. Take it as a learning experience. Because if you keep worrying about it, you can't change it. It's already done. But if you take it as a learning experience, like, oh, and you're like, oh, maybe I can do this differently next time. Well, then you're, you're prepared for the next time something that happens. So what I wanted to highlight today was just the fact that I can do things and have freedom and have this confidence because I know I'm not drinking today. I know alcohol is out of my life. It's just a brand new confidence that you, that you have with just basic interactions with people, stressful situations uh, when just life happens, stressful shit happens. Um, it's, just a, it's just a freeing thing to be able to be confident and just do just a solid, you just, you're just a, a solid guy. I have, I have plenty of weaknesses. But um, I deal with them and I learn from them. So that's my confidence data analysis chart right there. Okay. That's 20 years of research. All right. Took me half my life to figure that out. That if I stop drinking, Confidence goes through the roof. It's very simple. It might not be easy to do at first, but once you get through it, it becomes, everything becomes easier. Everything becomes easier. So back to you, Bobby C. 
I'm sweating over here. Yeah, great charting. Uh, uh, well, that was, you know, that was a lot of work doing all that charting work and going up and down and putting that pointer and everything. I mean, that's- I get the pointer and everything. I'm working up a sweat. I know you could have used the laser, but you went with the pointer. It's, it's you know, that's, that's the whole thing. I'm old school. Hey, look. We don't have to be brain surgeons and scientific. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, this is this is old school stuff. This is like kind of simplistic uh, charting. Uh, everybody wants to make all this stuff so complicated. You know, this is Alcoholics Anonymous deprogramming podcast. So, I, you know, Bobby's going to talk about some deprogramming stuff as far as, look, I, I didn't hear Joe mention any steps, you know, what step he was on. I didn't, I didn't hear Joe say that he was just at a meeting yesterday. I didn't hear Joe say he called his sponsor yesterday to pass all this by him. How in the hell does all this stuff happen when, when you're not going to step meetings and you're not into the steps and you don't have a sponsor and you don't have this God, you know, because God's mentioned six times in these this 12 steps. How, how, how are you doing without, without all that? What would you tell the viewer that's listening that feels that they have to do all these things that Alcoholics Anonymous is telling them to do. And if they don't, they're not going to get to this uh, rise in the arrow of confident, you know, the confident arrow going up. What would you say to them? I mean, how, how are you, you do? I mean, you, you're going on, uh, we, don't, we don't count time here, but Joey's going to be celebrating two years pretty soon. And, I don't know. He didn't. He didn't go to. Uh, how many meetings did you go to in the last year? The last year was probably two meetings. Two meetings. Well, how in the hell are you still sober and you're not in jail or institution or dead? <laughs> I don't get it. I don't what know. Do we... I guess I'm lucky. But to uh, answer your question a little bit, I would like to refer to the smart recovery handbook okay um these are a couple things that i highlighted and they kind of answer your, your question how do i, I do happen this? to have mine here too there you go how how is anyone able to do this without 12 steps and sponsor and all this and that now what i'm about to read could really come from anywhere anywhere right so, um it just so happens to be i'm reading it from the smart recovery book Right. So it says abstinence without recovery doesn't provide people with the tools and information they need to fill the addictive behavioral void, which is why lapses and relapses are more common than in abstinence with recovery. So I'm abstinent, but I also have some form of recovery that just doesn't happen to be AA 100%. My recovery from what? Co recovery from what? Recovery from my addiction to alcohol. Are you? Do you consider yourself recovered from your alcohol addiction, though? Your alcohol habit? Yeah, I suppose I am recovered so long as I don't pick up a drink again. Because so, so if I was to say that it sounds like maybe we're in recovery from life. And what we ha didn't know about life. So we're recovering new things like uncovering, recovering, and discovering new things about ourselves. <clears throat> would, would you tend to agree with that? Yeah, I agree with that also. Yeah, <clears throat> definitely. So ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> when we're talking about recovery, it doesn't have to be addiction, uh, drugs, or alcohol. It, it's really like about situations that we're dealing with in life. Right. right. So getting back with the smart. Go ahead, Joe. Said. So it goes on to say recovery is about learning to replace unhealthy behaviors with healthier behaviors. For instance, me and Bobby C meeting up every hour a week, hour, sometimes every two weeks, whatever. That is one change mm -hmm. for me that is uh, is healthy for me. It's good for me. I would not be doing this if I was still drinking. This is one part of my whole program that I do mm. that is a healthy behavior that replaces an unhealthy behavior. 
I'm going to read two more things from here. If you have ever thought, I'm, I'm a hopeless addict with a disease that I will never beat. I have no choice but to fight this forever. Or I have no choice but to keep using. Try changing your thoughts to, I used to have an addictive behavior, but I choose not to act that way anymore. Those words may help you feel more confident, especially in the beginning of your recovery. Now, if somebody told me that, I'd say, that's the most simplistic bullshit I've ever heard in my life. It's not that fucking easy. I don't really care. <clears throat> my hangovers are horrible. But the second I get that alcohol in me, it's all fucking worth it. I don't give a shit. Okay. But this means something to me now. Okay. I used to have an addictive behavior, but I choose not to act that way anymore. That's just a little seed I want to plant in somebody's mind that may not consider it useful information right now, but maybe will consider it useful information in the future. I'm just going to finish this. Take me two seconds. If you can Take feel that, that you will triumph over your unwanted behavior, then it's likely you will. If you can feel that you will triumph over your unwanted behavior, then it's unlikely you will. If one of smarts, tools, strategies, or exercises doesn't work for you, try a different one until you find what makes you successful. Recovery is possible. Urges fade away. Abstinence gets easier. Your addictive behavior becomes a thing of your past. You find meaning and enjoyment in your new life. If you can feel that you will triumph over your unwanted behavior, then it's likely you will. I made a decision. Okay, I made a decision. And I believe that I can triumph over my unwanted behavior. So <clears throat> those things that I read help me to stay sober and just so happens that I, I'm not 100% in AA and I'm not in a jail and I'm not in an institution and I don't have to call my sponsor um, while I'm on my lunch break asking him if I should put mustard on my hot dog or ketchup on my hot dog and I, it has nothing to do with uh, 12 steps and it's, it's my program. Um, also, I didn't want this to go into a whole smart program thing today but i i am enjoying this this book a lot of what it says because it says it, it kind of encourages you to do more than just smart recovery it says if 12 steps help you you know do that but also it says specifically do whatever recovery program works for you because there's not one recovery program that works for everyone it specifically says that so <clears throat> Again, integrating everything for me is how I get through difficult situations and stay sober without um, necessarily a higher power. I have a higher power. I was thinking about it last night. I just call my higher power something. That's what it is. What's your higher power? It's something. I don't know what it is, but it's something. And I don't even want to call it a higher power. But um, again, I don't, I'm not 100% in AA. I'm not 100% in Dharma recovery. I'm not 100% in smart recovery. I've said this before a hundred times, but that is um, how I get through and not end up in jails, institutions, or die. Like AA says you're going to do. Right. So, you know, like, you know, I've been saying for a long time in my podcast and my anonymous addiction, my truth about AA, as Bobby C sees it, is all about creating our own program. I mean, Joey and I started this because of that philosophy that I have that we take a little bit of this, take a little bit of that, uh, integrate it into our own consciousness and develop our own way through this thing called life challenging because we all we all know that look really getting 
uh, clean and they call it clean and sober, but quitting a, a, an addictive, uh, habitual, problematic behavior is really not difficult. It's it's easy. It's easy sobriety. It's easy sobriety, really. The, the problem is after we stop these behaviors is to not go back. And how do we do that? Or why do we go back? It's because of these life challenges that, that we need to overcome, which probably I didn't have. I know I didn't have the tools and the strategies and the things to help raise the confidence level also, you know. I mean, I could, I see people being, and have no confidence. They still don't have any confidence. And Joe, you, you said it, you said it when you were reading that the thing out of smart and you could have been reading that out of anything, you know, but you, you were reading it and it has to do with the thinking. Okay. So it has to do with our thinking. So REBT, or uh, Rational Emotive Behavioral Therapy, is about our emotions, our feelings, our thinking. Uh, it has to do with the, 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 the psyche of the body inside, you know. And um, I think when you read that, that's, that's what you're talking about. And you, because of your confidence is up, I, I think, I, I tend, I could be wrong, but I would tend to think that your confidence is up because of these things that you're doing today. Like, let me uh, get rid of this from, because of the, because of the things that you're doing, podcasting, staying positive, reading a little bit of this, taking a little bit of that. I know you've been researching things and you've gone to a meeting or two, right? But you're doing, you're doing these uh, podcasts to help boost your confidence level. So I, I, I tend to not think that if you know people just stop drinking, their confidence is going to go up. That's just my take. I could be totally wrong. But I you know I went to a lot of meetings for a lot of years, and uh, even me. I mean, I used to, I used to not get what I needed in a meeting. You know, I thought I did. I was getting this like quick fix. You know, I'd run to a meeting. I'd have a situation with my wife, my kids, my grandkids or something. Or I'd have a situation in life with work or some. Um, and I would run to a meeting. And I would get this like instant gratification fix, which actually they talk about the problem of immediate gratification in the smart book. On page six, actually, it talks about the problem of uh, and I'm just going to this. I mean, it talks about media gratification in all different books. You know, Joey and I aren't promoting smart recovery. We're just using that, some of the tools in smart recovery to help us. But I would run to a meeting to get this fix. And they were always tell me the fix is in the 12 steps and God, you know, higher power. When they say higher power, they mean God. When they say God, they, they mean AA. You know, so I was always trying to get this fix in AA and I'd leave the rooms and I'd come back and I'd do the same shit over, you know, uh, and it wasn't, uh, it really wasn't working. Luckily, I always went outside the box and got other little things like Joey's doing now. So Joey and millions of other people are going outside the box and they're getting this thing earlier they're they're getting it quicker it's easier because of the things that they're grabbing and putting into their toolbox and i think they're achieving um, a more awareness you know they're thinking questioning becoming aware observing and becoming aware quicker which is a great great thing back to you joey yeah, I can, uh, I can, I'm, I'm very thankful right now that I can remember how uncomfortable I was when I still had like alcohol in my system from the day before and I had to interact with somebody and it was just nothing but anxiety because I'm trying to not breathe out while I'm talking to them. I'm hoping they don't smell alcohol coming out of my pores. Hope, I'm hoping that they don't like see my bloodshot eyes. 
Um, I'm hoping that they just don't see that I have um, general anxiety while I'm trying to listen to what they're saying. And um, so I'm, I'm lucky that I can remember that pretty good because um, I'll turn this into a, a little AA meeting right now and I'll say something that I heard in an AA meeting. A woman said, I don't want to have to, I don't want to pick up again because I don't want to have to get sober again. I don't want to have to get sober again because all that alcohol is out of my system. I haven't had alcohol in my system for two years. And when that alcohol is in your system, you just, you got nothing but anxiety and just waiting for the next time you're able to get more. So the, my body doesn't have that. It's not craving it. Um, and once that, once that all that alcohol got out of my system and I was able to tend to the obsessions in my mind, it brought me to a place where I am now, where I still have obsessions in my mind, but I have tools now that I've picked up along the way to help me with those obsessions, thoughts, or fantasies, or whatever you want to call them, or urges, or whatever. But um, for me, just be just simply not having the alcohol and the physical urge, the physical withdrawal gives me um, a whole new confidence. Just just the physical part, just having a, a conversation with someone. And I don't have to worry about any of that bullshit about being hung over or anything like that. That is just total game changer right there. Um, for me, that is a, it was, that was just, a, that was just an amazing feeling. Then obviously, yeah, you got to get over, you got to do work on yourself with the, the mental obsession bullshit. But for me, that, physical addiction part once that's once that's gone that's a that's a huge step forward so to go back to that i don't want to start over again i don't want to detox from alcohol again that's too much fucking work i said last time i didn't want to drink again because drinking was a lot of work but so is getting sober detoxing that whole fucking transition period sucks i don't want to deal with that shit again alcohol is out of my system now i just have to work on up here yeah what can i say about that that's uh you know that's so true for the person that's listening for the people that are listening hopefully there's somebody listening somebody will listen somebody will tune in um look this podcast isn't about the programming members it's not about bad mouthing members where you're at where you're getting uh you know clean and sober uh we're trying to help people just think outside the box a little bit if you if you love where you're at you know stay there uh if you're new just coming in you're being sent you don't you don't you don't want it but you know maybe you need it your parents may be sending you to a, a detox, then you're going to go to a rehab. You really don't want this yet, you know. Uh, we're talking to you also, you know, because we all needed it at some time, and then the need became a, a want. So we're not uh, talking to people that just want it. Uh, we're talking to people that possibly need it too. And look, we're, we're not... We're, Joey and I are abstinence. We believe in abstinence from alcohol. That's just our deal. Me, I don't believe I'm powerless over alcohol. I walk through bars and liquor. Liquor don't call me. Uh, you know, it, it's 
it's up here. Joey said it's all up in the thinking. So we're talking about people that uh, don't even want it. They just maybe need it. And the people I'm talking to people that don't even, you know, I was, I don't want to even go into my, I don't talk about my family situation. I don't want to talk about family, but uh, that's personal. And I don't do that on podcast, but the younger generation, I'm talking to 12 year olds, 14 year olds, 15, 17, 18, 19, this, this smart recovery program and harm reduction possibly can show somebody how to moderate or observe uh, the behaviors that, that are creating some problematic uh, things in their lives today, maybe due to the drug or the alcohol. We're, we're, because when Joey describes that he don't want to go through that again, you know, Maybe you, you don't know what he's talking about right now, but, but you may get to a point where you can understand what we're saying about these things because it's all cause and effect. You know, take, take a look. I'm talking to the young people now. Take a look at your behavior with the cause and effect. It's like, take a look at ourselves. What are we doing? How are we responsible for the actions around us uh, what are we doing? Cause and effect. What are we doing that causes some effect to our family members or our bodies or ourselves? Just take a look at it. You know, uh, there's there's books that say smoke while you're reading this book and maybe you'll stop smoking. That's what we're saying here. Take a look at this podcast and just listen. We're not look. If you don't want to quit right now or you don't want to ever quit, just take a look. Just take a listen. Just listen up. You know, we're just putting out some ideas for the next generation to bypass these things, because maybe, you know, a lot of people don't believe in the higher power. They don't believe in God. Uh, maybe they are spiritual, but they don't like to be sent to Alcoholics Anonymous because they believe it's antiquated. It's 86 years old and the methods are kind of, you know, old and the trend goes to more temperance. Uh, it's a temperance movement still. So we're just putting out some information for, for people to take a look at a lot of different things. Hopefully somebody will, you know, listen to our podcast. Joey's going to label this or name this something pretty cool, you know, about the confidence level and the booze. You know, it, you, you drop your consumption to cause and effect, I believe, definitely. If you got if it's problematic drinking, you drop your booze consumption or your drug consumption, your cause and effect's going to go down. OK, it, it's going to go down in the sense that it's not going to be problematic and hurtful and unhappy with drama and crises, you know, I, I feel. So we're trying to eliminate a lot of that stuff, too. Joey and I believe in abstinence. And if you believe in moderation or if you believe in still drinking and drugging and you, and you enjoy it and it's really not problematic, go to it. You know, we're not trying to uh, stop anybody. We're not, this isn't a temperance movement. Alcoholics Anonymous is a temperance movement. And uh, so I, smart recovery is probably a temperance movement in itself too. But we're saying check, uh, check a lot of different things out. So back to you, Joey. Yeah, I can, I can remember uh, being shit-faced in the car and my wife is driving. We're driving back to our apartment or whatever it was at the time and we were just uh we hadn't been together for a, a long time but i was shit faced and she knew i was shit faced and i turned to her and i said just so you know i'm not i'm never going to change i'm always going to be this way and i never thought i was going to change i never had any desire to change i pretty much always knew that i i drank a lot and that's just who i was and that's what i wanted or needed or or whatever and i didn't really care if it wasn't socially acceptable this is what i this is what i did um if i wanted to drink in the morning i would drink in the morning just because you think just because you fucking think it's not appropriate to drink in the morning guess what i don't fucking give a shit i feel like having a couple beers in the morning all right that's your fucking opinion i don't really care so my point is 
to any viewer that is watching and listening to us, I can appreciate that their perception might be, well, I'm just, I just going to keep on drinking. This is just how it is. This is just who I am. This is just, it's easier for me to just keep drinking than it is to completely change my life and turn it around. And because I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know. I have the desire. I'm, I, it's just easier for me to keep drinking. Well, I was, I was in that same boat and I'm a hard headed motherfucker. Okay. I didn't have any desire to, to stop drinking right now. I'm not drinking. And now if you have a little desire to try and stop drinking for just a couple days and acknowledge or maybe even a week and acknowledge how much better you feel. Maybe you can just get a glimpse of, of something that I feel because every single day for the past two years, when I woke, when I wake up and open up my eyes, my immediate reaction to life is not fuck. Okay. It's not fuck. And it's not fear and it's not anxiety, and it's not dread for the day. It's, I'm not hungover. I'm not hungover. It actually never gets old. Waking up, not hungover, doesn't fucking get old. I am still amazed every morning when I wake up that I'm not hungover because I was so used to it for 20 years. Open up your eyes. Fucking hungover. Feel like shit. Open up your eyes. Fuck. I did it again. Open up your eyes. Anxiety. I got to go get more beer. Okay. So if you try that out and you could see the difference in how you feel, then you can get a little glimpse of maybe what I'm talking about because I can understand someone listening to us, um, believing what we're saying, but not having any desire to maybe go ahead and, and do something to change. I can appreciate where they're coming from because I was, I, I never wanted to change. Let me stop you right there, Joey. You know what? That, that's a great, that was, that was perfect because I can relate to that hundred percent. And let me feed that back to the, to the viewers. Okay. What Joey just said, I don't have to, you don't have, I don't have to interpret that for you because you can, you got that. I mean, you can feel that. Here, here, yeah, here, yeah, here's the message. I, I was at a point in my life where I could not imagine quitting drinking and drugging. I could, I thought everybody else that wasn't drinking and drugging, they, they were fucked up. They were, they were stupid. They, who wants to be a teetotaler? Are you kidding me? They're missing out on life. So I can relate to the young person that still wants to, or the old person, young person, or the other person that still wants to drink and they're partying, and they're never going to let go, and that right now, I'm not, you're not telling me what to do, I love it, I enjoy it, because Joey just shared all that, so we're talking, talking to them, now look, Joey was at that stage, I was at that stage, we went from that stage to knowing we needed it stage, and then from knowing we needed it stage, because of cause and effect, to getting to stopping because the consequences of our behaviors were getting greater, okay, each phase. We didn't want to stop. We know we needed to stop, and then we had to stop or wanted to stop, okay? So we want now, needed, wanted. And if you look up the desire in the dictionary, desire means wanting. It actually says craving. So you can have a desire in the beginning when you don't want anything or need anything, think you need anything. I have a desire to drink. I want to drink. Two, I have a desire thinking that I may need something. 
to I have a desire and a craving to not use, not drink. So yes, me and Joey are living examples of that transition or that spiral, you know. And you may not want to ever quit drinking. I had a friend that never quit drinking and he lived it before a year before he, he died and he didn't die of alcoholism. It could have been, but you know, uh, I went to a wedding with him and we had a great, great time and me and my wife and his wife, uh, we grew up together, you know, drinking and stuff like that. And he continued drinking for years, but he, he lived a uh, good life. So there's people that never will quit drinking or drugging. And that's up to you. You know, there's people that need it and know they need it that may not get help or want to get help. And then there's people that need it will, will get help and want it. And then there's people, millions of us, that continue to want it, you know. And today, it's, I have not, it has nothing to do with drinking and drugging today. My life it has nothing absolutely nothing to do with I don't drink or drug today I don't want to I don't have a desire to uh, I don't have a need to I don't have a craving triggers nothing can trigger me to uh, drink you know triggers or cravings or urges I don't I don't have any of those because I don't I don't I choose not to my conscious awareness is so expanded and so great it would be like me grabbing a bottle of Clorox. This is me, not you. You can, you can moderate. You can do whatever. But I'm just saying, it's like grabbing a bottle of Clorox and saying, oh, I, this triggers me and I got a craving. Now I have an urge and I'll pick up the Clorox and I'll drink a bottle of Clorox. I mean, that's how, that's how drinking and drugging is to me today, you know? Uh, I, I don't I don't have any desire to do it. It's like I don't have any desire to go rob a bank or or do any really stupid crazy shit. You know what I mean? I, I equate it like that. You know, an old sponsor told me years ago, "This is for me, not for you that's moderating and can do it. Not for you that that doesn't believe in abstinence." He told me, "Put the crossbones on the booze." You know, and that's what I did. Years and years and years ago, an old, uh, an old, an old guy, I loved him. His name was Bricklayer Al, and he told me, "Put the crossbones on it, and uh, you know, make it easy, keep it simple." That's for me and Joey. Bricklayer Al sounds like a bad motherfucker. Well, he was a bricklayer. He was an old. Uh, from the other country, came over here. Yeah, bricklayer. Yeah, we've got all kinds of names. How do you think Bobby C came about? You know, everybody's got to be uh, having this these type of names. Joey C. You know what I mean? You go into a meeting. Look, I'm not raising my hand anymore and saying that my name is Bobby C and I'm an alcoholic. That's for sure. I'm not doing that shit anymore. Well, the the difference between me and and anyone who's listening and who's still drinking and like you might i used to i used to like to get fucked up and watch like intervention on a and a and and get fucked up and and i would get fucked up and go online and look at shit about you know the problem drinking and, and stuff like that um if anyone's listening and if if you're fucked up or you're trying to not get fucked up or or whatever. I we're I'm the same fucking person you are, except I just used to do that, and now I don't anymore. Well, I mean, we're the same fucking we're the same fucking people, except I just don't drink anymore. That's it. You know what I mean? So I don't know what you think, Bobby. See, I I you got any more to you got any? Oh, no, that's uh, we 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 did a we did a nice thing with the chart. You know, you decrease your alcohol, you're probably going to decrease. Most likely, you're going to decrease your cause and effect and the problems that are going to happen in your life. And like Joey said, your confidence level right off the bat is going to improve because you're doing something to improve your health. You know, there's the chart. Remember it. Remember decrease it. consumption. It took him 20 years to develop this. Yeah. Okay, this is scientifically proven. So if you believe in science, here it is. And don't deal. forget to subscribe. Yeah, that's it. That's the real deal. Don't forget to subscribe to our uh, 
channel, Alcoholics Anonymous Deep Programming Podcast. And check us out. Joey's he's a recurring guest on the other channel. He could come on anytime he wants. We're going to be doing a podcast together soon on uh, Anonymous Addiction uh, Podcast on YouTube. Check out uh, Anonymous Addiction at, at My Truth About AA on Facebook. Facebook is, is holding my membership. It will not increase my members. It ke- loves to keep me at 1,000.1. It won't, and, and I keep on getting members and the, and the count won't go up. They have this uh, algorithm or whatever they call it. They, they don't like a lot of uh, different speeches against a lot of different things. They control us. Facebook is controlling us. And uh, Instagram is owned by Facebook. So that's going to, you know, they'll, they'll control us in any, any way to get the message out. But they're not going to stop us. We're going to keep on sharing. So check us out on both, both places. The next podcast on anonymous addiction, I'm going to be talking about the Catholic Church, Alcoholics Anonymous, and Matt Talbot, and how they all connect, you know. And, and Joey and I are going to get together on the, this deep programming podcast, uh, maybe in the next couple of weeks. And we're going to do the part three, we're connecting the dots and follow the money because we left off at a certain spot. So we're going to continue with that, connect the dots, follow the money. We've got a lot more to tell you about a lot of different things. It's your choice. We believe in the power of choice. You know, uh, I believe freedom without labels and I believe anonymous. I'm not anonymous. Joey's not anonymous. Eventually we believe in anonymity, anonymity for everybody else because I, I would not give anybody else's anonymity away. I, I fully believe that. But for me, I don't need to be anonymous anymore because I'm not hiding from anything. I had an alcohol problematic problem i was a I, that was a big habit for me today i don't no big deal uh i think the re, i'll talk about the recovery trap the recovery prison in a lot of other podcasts but uh, i'm so glad to hook up with joey because this is part of my life journey this is this is part of it okay that joey's been a big help to me uh without connecting you know especially during this this um, pandemic thing, you know, this isolation shit, these podcasts gave me a whole nother, uh, it revitalized me. It gave me, I was like, gave me energy, some more enthusiasm. It, it, It helped me with my purpose because I was, I had all this shit in my brain, all this stuff in my body. That's no good. You know, people have to speak out. You know, speak out on subjects that, that they have uh, some care about. And they want to pass on to other people. So, you know, wherever there, there's adversity, there's a seat of equivalent benefit. And through this adversity that I've been through uh, in the last, it's going to be going two years. You believe it in January with this shit. And uh, it's, I, I've been making good out of it, you know. So me and Joey connected and a couple other people connected. But Joey's helped me. He's my buddy. He's my partner. Uh, and uh, and we're going to be hopefully doing this for a while, you know? And if we don't, no big deal. Back to you, Joey. Thanks, Bobby. See, you've been helping me out a lot too. That goes without saying. And uh, don't forget everybody to uh, check me out on Brutally Sober Podcast on Anchor or Spotify. They're all old episodes, but you'll get a new one uh, sooner or later. Uh, Twitter, uh, Brutsob, Instagram at Brutsob. And stay tuned for our next episode because you never know what kind of charts or pie graphs I might come up with next. That's right. That's Take right. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.